Hi, this is Greg Shaw. I'm here to take you on a walkthrough of the converted Java source code uh, that comes out of the 100% automated conversion process uh, from the forward open source technology. If you recall, forward will convert your progress ABL into Java source code and the result uh, it runs as a complete drop and replacement for your original application, so it's it's fully compatible. The uh, the program I'm going to start with is it's small. It's just uh, it, because we have a lot to go over. This is the going to be the first part of the walkthrough. There'll be a second video going through the rest. But the um, this primes.p calculates prime numbers between uh, two integer values inclusive. So um, it's, it's just contrived here, but basically we've got an external procedure. Um, there's an internal procedure called edit range, a user-defined function called fermat test, and another internal procedure called calc primes. And then inside the repeat block of the external procedure, we call this other program display primes, um, which is just a small program. Both programs uh, use this primes.i which is just a simple include file that defines a shared variable and a shared temp table. Uh, I'm going to use the pre-processed version of this that we call the cache file. This is part, this is part of the, it's an intermediate um, output of the conversion process. It just lets us see the fully pre-processed pre -processed version. Um, this, you know, so it just, um, I'm, I'm going to close these off just to simplify things. So. Primes.p, notice that uh, we've got a comment, just kind of history at the front of the file. We'll, we pull that over. All of this is converted automatically, 100%, you know, automated. It's not, this hasn't been edited by hand in any way. Um, and it, it works, you know, right out of the box as soon as conversion is done. So uh, one of the things we do is we, we search for, when we convert the comments over, we search for... Um, references to the original file name and we convert it to the, the new Java file name. But the, that begs the question, you know, what's, what's the mapping here? We basically, this, every external procedure is going to have a business logic class that matches it and all of the flow of control in your program will move into that. And in this case, we take this primes.p, the file name, and we convert it into a regular camel cased Java class name, so primes in this case. Um, we we also you'll see here the resulting program has a package um, that's to be expected, right? I mean, you you know if you have a program or a, an app of any complexity, you probably have a subdirectory structure, and uh, we basically take that subdirectory structure and we mirror it as packages as a package structure. So if you've got a good subdirectory structure, then we, you'll have a good package structure in the result. If you have a poor package uh, subdirectory structure, then we won't make it worse. Um, and then we've got, this is the, the runtime. We're importing a bunch of the runtime classes and we're statically importing some specific static methods of some classes so that we can refer to them by the simple method name instead of the class name dot method name form. You'll see examples of that later. All right, so the first thing in this external procedure, we've got a, a shared variable. You see we're, we have a shared variable manager um, and we're creating a new integer uh, value. Notice that we're duplicating, we have, we have Java counterparts that we've written uh, to match the behavior of each of the data types of the ABL. So in this case, we're using, we've got three integers, prime count, which is a shared uh, variable and then start num and end num, which um, which all are integer values, but only one of them do we uh, expose through the shared variable manager by its name. The other two, however, we do they are undoable. We would use a slightly different factory uh, in order to create the no undo versions of those. So yes, we support <laughs> undoability and transactions and subtransactions and all the undo processing that maps into that, and we support shared variables. Notice how we've taken the names. Uh, hyphens are totally invalid characters in pretty much every language except for the ABL. 
But uh, so we, we convert those into valid Java names by using the hyphen as a clue about the syllables. And so we, we, we get camel casing, a nice camel case result. Uh, so, which, which brings us down to the external procedure itself. The external procedure in Java is always going to be named execute because procedures do not return values in the ABL, it will be void. Uh, if there were parameters, you would see the parameters here in, in the normal location for how Java parameters are passed. And then, or defined, I should say. And then um, the, you'll see inside this external procedure, uh, conti the continue variable, by the way, notice how we had to, we had to put an uh, underscore at the end of it because continue is actually a Java keyword. Um, so, but um, it's, it's only used inside the external procedure, so we're able to scope it here instead of as a member variable. So we, we will attempt to scope it scope all resources to the lowest level as, that is possible. Um, so the external procedure itself, the code, we, we actually delegate the execution of this to something called the block manager. And then and this external procedure is a static method in block manager and we're passing, we're telling it, oh, here's the class of the external procedure that's being executed and then and here is the code and notice we're using a lambda, all right, and we're creating a new block. There are many more complicated forms of this, this construction, but basically this is the simplest form where we're just passing a single block of code, the body itself, uh, which is here. Uh, we do this because all of that complexity of uh, infinite loop re protection and retries and uh, undo and transactions and subtransactions and all the block properties and so forth that you get in progress. We put that in the runtime. So if we were to explode that out into your application source code, it would be a complete nightmare. This, we believe, is pretty readable and pretty understandable. Um, it's slightly more verbose than the original, but not by much. Uh, so one of the things that we do that does make it a little bit more verbose, but we believe that is a best practice, is we make things explicit. So the buffer that we're using called list is, is scoped to the external procedure. So we call open scope on it explicitly instead of hiding that. Um, then we, we have a repeat while. Let me, let me show you in the block manager, um, we, we've got these repeat methods named repeat while, and it's a static method, all right? And then, and in this case, um, we're basically, we're going to uh, call the, we're gonna call this basically with a string that defines the uh, label with the condition, which is the continue variable as a lambda, uh, and on phrase in this in this case, you know, on error leave loop label zero, and then uh, body. So uh, in the block manager, you'll see here. This is actually it's a slightly different version. I think we're using this version here. Uh, no, no, we're not. Anyway, we're using a slightly different version, and we're calling repeat worker, which um, let's jump down to repeat worker just to give you an idea of what is going on. So this is in the runtime. This is not in your application code. And um, in the repeat worker, we are uh, we're, we're handling some calculation of, of the type of the block and the default uh, on phrases. And then we're calling something called core loop. And core loop um, is basically where we actually manage the execution of that delegated block. So um, we're, we're handling some pre, we're, we're, this is, this is a, you know, a pre method that, that is used for some cases. And then we, we do some initialization and this is where we have a while loop and we check if we have to iterate and we process the body and we've got all of our different kinds of exceptions. This is in the in the forward runtime itself. So, you know, we've we've we take we hide all that complexity away, all that exception processing and everything else, and we make the Java code a lot simpler to read as a result. 
Um, so what, you know, but that, that is where before we're, we were showing you, I was showing you how we did these static imports. We are, that's where we're calling external procedure and repeat while, instead of saying block manager dot repeat while, block manager dot ex external procedure. It just makes the code a little cleaner. It reads better. It reads closer to what the original did. But um, control flow ops invoke is essentially the equivalent to a run statement. So here we're, we're executing run edit range, then run calc primes, and then display primes here, and we're passing the buffer list in. And then here's the message with an update. Well, same thing basically here. This is the Java equivalent. So that's your external procedure. Um, let me show the internal procedures very quickly. So um, edit range, basically here's a frame definition, right, in a form statement. We also support, of course, the defined frames. And, uh, and the ability of having all those frame referencing statements that, that can add structure, layout, and formatting. All of that formatting kind of stuff is moved out to a, a separate frame definition. Again, we'll talk about that in, a, in part two um, of the walkthrough, which will be a separate video. So you're not going to see a, a backing um, equivalent to the form statement here. What you will see is, a, is an explicit create frame where we create a new instance of this frame that is a separate class in our pre-block. And then, again, we're, this is an internal procedure. We, we changed, converted the name, as, as you would expect, using this hyphen as a syllable um, clue. And when you call it, we call internal procedure, and we pass the block in and let the runtime manage all of the properties and transaction processing and undo and all that. Um, so we create our instance of, of the frame. And then, in this case, we have to set the validation expressions um, in the business logic because we're accessing values that are in the business logic. So, you know, we can't we can't put these into the frame definition because these are these are validation expressions are inherently part of the business logic. Again, we make the scoping of the frame explicit. Well, then we create a, a list of things that we're going to update. So we on the frame we call update and we pass this array of frame elements. Um, which basically defines the mapping between the local variable and the widget that is being edited. So this is kind of the equivalent of update start num end num with frame range params. Um, okay. Format test. We'll, we'll get back to. Let's go to calc primes first because that's that's used from the external procedure directly. So calc primes. We've got a couple of local variables. Again, you'll see them here. Um, we, we then call the internal procedure and we pass the body of the block in. Uh, this empty temp table it converts into this list delete all. So list is our buffer. And remember, that's a member of our outer class, so we're referencing it directly. Prime count is a member of our outer class. We're referencing that and we're assigning it zero, um, which is this right here. And then we've got a repeat block with, with a repeat two. Right? So here's the two clause. We're, pet, we're creating this class that defines the two clause. We're creating a class that defines on error leave loop label one, passing those in to, to configure our block that's you know, in the block manager. And then the, here's the body. So we're assigning false to our actual class. We're, you know, we're checking to see if possible is less than three. If so, we assign actual is true. Otherwise, you know, we, we basically um, are calling, we're, we're checking to see if it's even, um, and if it's not even, then, you know, we're, we're uh, calling Fermat test. Fermat test just is a math algorithm for calculating prime numbers, or it's the likelihood of a prime number, actually, but it holds for the, the ranges that we can do in this program. So, um, and then after, after this, if actual is, is true, then we create a new uh, record in the buffer. We set the possible number as the num field, and then we, um, increment, we increment the number we're checking. 
um, you know, because we're, we're looping through the, the range, right, from start num to end num. So two from, you know, repeat possible equals start num to end num, that's, that's this definition right here. So possible is going to be a different value each time. Um, and and we're, we're, we're changing our prime counter. So uh, <clears throat> that's, that's the, the calc primes. Um, format test here is just is really this expression and this this input and you'll see here it it, conf it, it we pass parameters we basically def it's an input parameter in this case so we essentially make a copy of it so that we can't change the original reference uh, and then again function is is a method in block manager and the function name is this, it returns a logical type, and here's the body of it, and then this is the expression. The expressions currently are in postfix form. We would like to do infix if, if Java had operator overloading, which it doesn't, um, because, uh, but, you know, we, we, that's an area that we're probably going to improve over time. We have some different strategies we're going to look at, but anyway, it's still... It's still pretty straightforward as to what is happening. And yes, we support all the different math functions and operators and comparisons and types and all of that that you would expect. Uh, let me show you display primes. It's pretty simple. Um, actually, whoop, let me load it here. Display primes. And then, oh, sorry. And then here we'll load the Java. So in this case, it's it's a little bit bigger, but essentially you see similar. You know, there's there's a little bit of the imports and the package like you would expect. The class name is called Display Primes. You get your members as you would expect, and then we have just the execute method. There are no other procedures in here. <clears throat> and in this case, we are essentially we're we're doing some handling of this buffer parameter here. Um, and we're opening the scope on it and creating what we call an adaptive query, which is the, res the, res the Java, uh, the, it's the Java equivalent of a for each. So in this case, for each B list, um, and you know, uh, where, uh, that num is greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, we're, again, we're, we are, uh, we're, we're initializing the query with our where clause, essentially, right, and and passing the buffer in. Uh, in this init block of the for each, we're also opening scope on the frame. This is a down frame, uh, so you, again, you you won't see the definition of the down frame that's separate because um, it's been moved into a separate class. But this display statement defines the down frame, so it's it's unnamed frame, right? So we just we created a frame zero name for it. Uh, here's the query. When we enter the body, we get the next record, and then we call display on this element list that maps the field, the num field of B list buffer to the widget named num in the frame. And this is going to do the display and the, the down frame and you know all your columns and everything as you would expect. And then at the end, we do the message statement um, here. So. You know, again, it's the equivalent, it's, but it's a Java form of it. Uh, that's, I think that is, that is where we'll stop this, um, this particular video. I, I want to highlight um, what, what we saw here, right? Essentially, there are some things that get split off into other classes, but expressions, assignments, variables, any, you know, all the top-level abstractions, internal external procedures, user-defined functions, triggers, and so forth. All of your flow of control do repeat for editing blocks, if, case statements, uh, run statements, next, leave, return, quit. All your control abstractions, whether they're blocks or loops. Transactions, subtransactions, all your block properties, your on phrases, undo, retry, infinite loop protection. Your data access, so all your querying and your manipulation, your, your modifying of those records. Uh, you know, all your UI statements that are actually controlling the frames or menus and uh, and most of your basic language statements and built-in function usage methods attributes stuff all of that goes into your business logic class and forms the flow of your program 
Um, so anything that's not split off <laughs> is in your business logic class. Uh, that's what we've got for today. I, I appreciate your time. Uh, you know, you, you can get much more information at beyondabl.com. Uh, but please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on social media. Uh, and we will be continuing to do more and more of these videos. And uh, thanks again.